As of this afternoon, Ken Salazar is now on the clock. The Interior Secretary met today with groups from all sides of the controversial Cape Wind project. Salazar says the arguments were passionate today and there is no compromise in place right now. But he told those involved in the debate, you decide or I'll decide for you. And Salazar says he'll do so by the end of April. The context of the meetings that I had today and in, in reviewing uh, the pending application before us today, uh, from a legal point of view, I announced uh, the following timeline to bring uh, the Cape Wind application to conclusion. Today, on the 13th of January, we uh, noticed it and uh, organized it as a formal consultation under the National Historic Preservation Act uh, 106 consultation. We will allow for public comment to continue on this effort through the 12th of February. Uh, on the 12th of February, we will close the public comment on the Cape Wind application. Following that, we will uh, analyze the comments and on March the 1st, we will make a decision on how to move forward. In making the decision on how to move forward, there will be two alternatives before us. One alternative will be to formally terminate the consultation which we have begun and uh, then to move forward with uh, the additional steps that will be needed for us to make a final decision on the pending application. The second alternative or the second fork in the road is that uh, the parties who are uh, a part of uh, the Cape Cod uh, wind application will come to a memorandum of agreement that will address the adverse impacts that have been identified and that will provide the mitigation measures uh, that will address uh, those uh, particular adverse impacts. At the end of the day, uh, I will make a decision on uh, the uh, pending application before the Department of Interior in uh, working with uh, MMS and uh, the other agencies of, uh, of this department uh, in the month of April. And that will be the final decision uh, for this department with respect to the Cape Wind application. Clean Skies' Margaret Ryan is with us now, just back from the meeting earlier today at the Department of the Interior. Margaret, welcome back. I'm glad you're not out of breath. I know it was yes. a, a close call. Let's talk about what the Secretary has laid out for himself now. Gives himself to the end of April, and really it sounds like this decision is in his hands entirely if all of these parties can't come to some agreement. Well, that's pretty much what he said. Yes, he said he was making the decision. In fact, reporters quizzed him. Is it clear? Yes, it's me. <laughs> um, he insists he has not made a decision yet. He said the chances are 50-50, essentially. It could go one way or the other. He's going to listen to everybody. There is a formal legal consultation started just today under the Historic Preservation Act. It will go till February 12th. He will look at all those comments. He will not make a decision until after he's gone through that consultation process. Uh, and in fact, legally, he'd be on pretty shaky ground if he said he'd, he'd come to a conclusion before it. I found it interesting that right up top at the beginning, he said, I am the Chief Historic Preservation Officer of the United States. I had never thought of the Department of Interior uh, Secretaries that, that way, but he said, this is my job. And he said, that's a huge priority with him. And the other huge priority with President Obama is renewable energy. Mm -hmm. So he said, here he is trying to balance these two giant priorities. The historic preservation uh, issue comes up because a local uh, Native American tribe, the Wampanoag, uh, there's a site, the site of this wind farm project is some shallows in Nantucket Sound. And uh, some members of that tribe believe there are ancestral remains on those, uh, what were islands back in the last ice age. It would take it back on the order of 12,000 years, which is right at the edge of any known uh, civil, you know, human civilization of the North American continent. But uh, if there are remains there, there would be things that would, would in fact uh, get historic preservation. Mm -hmm. Now, one possible avenue of agreement that's been discussed is the Cape Wind developers say they'll drill boreholes before they actually sink these foundations. The foundations for these things go 80 feet deep. They're mm -hmm. huge uh, turbines. And they said if any of the uh, boreholes bring up anything that indicates human remains, then, then they'd stop on that site and, and reconsider what they're going to do. But, uh, you know, a larger issue, which is in front of the secretary, is that the historic preservation designation would apply to 500 square miles of Nantucket Sound. And uh, there were several questions about that today because if Nantucket Sound can be designated historic, well, an awful lot of other bodies of water can be uh, designated. It doesn't actually prevent development. 
development, but it mm -hmm. sure adds another layer of complication. Now, as we said, uh, Secretary Salazar used the term passionate for the arguments he heard today. We're talking about indigenous peoples with sacred grounds, uh, also in some cases very wealthy homeowners dealing with property values, so they have ammunition in this fight as well. What are the chances, according to the Secretary, for compromise here? This really isn't a story of just two sides coming together. This is multifaceted. It is multifaceted, and he didn't really sound all that optimistic about it. <laughs> hence the um, deadline. Yeah, hence, you know, he talked about the stark differences he heard in the meetings uh, and the passion with which uh, opinions were expressed. You know, he had three consecutive meetings today. The first one was with uh, Native American groups all by themselves. And he stressed that they got a standalone chance to talk to him. Mm -hmm. And uh, the second one was with local officials and local interest groups, pro and con. And the third one was with the legal parties to any kind of settlement here. Um, it, he said he originally was going to meet with them on three separate days. And finally, he just said, let's just do it all together. And he listened to them all consecutively. He said, he thought that turned out to be a good thing because he was hearing this all at once. He did indicate, I think, that he would prefer them to come to agreement. He would prefer that. But he sounded a little bit like a judge in a civil case who says to the parties, you guys either come to a settlement or I'm going to make one for you and you nobody may be happy by the time <laughs> I get through. Yeah, deciding to cut the baby in yeah. two, right? It does get complicated. Is this in some sense, Margaret, a litmus test? for offshore wind development. You said yourself and the secretary said it over and over again. Offshore wind is one of the priorities for Interior under the Obama administration. Well, you know, several times in several different ways uh, at this press conference, Salazar was asked that question. Mm -hmm. And he insisted that the decision here is not a template for future offshore wind. He said uh, the Atlantic overall has probably the best prospects for wind development uh, any place in the United States. But he said just not every place is appropriate, mm -hmm. uh, either offshore or onshore. Uh, he said, look at our agreement with FERC a few months back, uh, dividing up the, the bureaucratic responsibility for who does what in these permits. Uh, he said he thinks at, at the end of the day, uh, developers, wind developers are going to have much greater clarity. Uh, but he said, he said the issues here might be more localized. I mean, he said the tough questions here, the very toughest, were the cultural issues having to do with uh, you know, the claims of the tribal, uh, tribal lands and the view shed said simply people who did not want to have their view of the ocean spoiled. And he said that's certainly uh, an, a, a value element in here, too. Um, he said there were, there were suggestions, so there have been circulated recently, that the whole project simply be picked up and moved south of, um, basically south of Martha's Vineyard. Mm -hmm. And um, it, that uh, saying, oh, well, this could avoid all these issues. But he confirmed that, in fact, that would require a whole new application and it's not likely the Cape Wind developers who have put in nine years and untold thousands of dollars into the probably millions into this mm -hmm. pro whole project uh, can afford to just pick it up and start all over again. Right, maybe the real estate values are a little lower the farther <laughs> south you go. I do want to mention, Margaret, before you go, that Margaret did talk to Secretary Salazar one-on-one -on -one earlier today, and we'll hear more from the Secretary tomorrow morning on the Energy Report, right? Yes, we will. Okay, I know he has a lot to discuss. Yes. Thanks so much, Margaret.